My name is Alex T. Thomas, and this is my friend Catherine. We're photographers, and we've lived in Tokyo for the past four years. We spend our weekends traveling around to find hidden gems of Japan's past. We'll be spending some time in Tokyo and then heading to the town of Gujo Hachiman in Gifu Prefecture. Along the way, we'll be shooting with the Canon EOS M50. Why Japan? Oh man, where do I begin? I love the history and the culture and the attention to detail everywhere. It's very visually inspiring place. Everywhere you look is photogenic. Catherine and I are working on a series of projects together, like documenting Japan's public bathhouses called sentos. These buildings are incredible time capsules offering a glimpse into Japan's Showa era. So we've shot in about maybe 10 to 12 of them by now. So for this trip, we decided on Magic Showa Onsen, which I was really excited to get access to because it's been on my list for a while. The Magic Showa Sento features a huge mural of Mount Fuji, a very unique tiled mosaic. In this scene, we're shooting wide using the 22mm f2.0 and the 11 to 22 taking advantage of the natural light. It's called Magic Showa Onsen because the owner is a magician, like, like a real professional world champion magician. We got a free magic show. Oh, 93. 93. 93. Oh my god, we got a star. Oh my god. Magic was delightful. Really eager to share his tricks with us. And I tried to like look for his like sleight of hand and I feel like it was just real magic. Before we left, we took a moment to get a portrait of Taji. This was a great opportunity to use the touch to focus function on the M50. After the Sento, we made a quick stop at Mabashi Inari Shrine. Like many shrines in Tokyo, it's a peaceful oasis away from the hustle of the city. The image of the kitsune, the fox, is at the center. Kitsune are associated with intelligence and long life and are said to possess magical powers. According to legend, if you write a wish on a strip of paper, the kitsune will deliver it to the Inari god. Mabashi Inari Shrine offers a beautiful glimpse into Japan's ancient past. Catherine and I love documenting the different eras of Japan. My personal favorite is the bubble era. During the late 80s, Japan enjoyed a period of affluence that brought with it an incredible amount of development. Throughout Tokyo, you can still find hidden shops and bars lost in time. We like the idea of documenting it visually and sharing it so that a younger generation can be like, oh wow, look at this really kitschy, colorful, beautiful, interesting piece of Japanese culture. And the more people know about it, the more people will go. Lover's Karaoke is a prime example. So this place looks good. Yeah, let's try this. <laughs> look, there's a little... Yeah, this looks good. Oh, 70s, Music 90s. Don't say. Okay, perfect. Oh, this is... Oh my god, okay. Yes, gold. They have a black light. Decorations everywhere. Perfect. With mirrored walls, velvet booths, and disco balls, it's everything we could ask for. <laughs> it's also a great opportunity to test the low light capability of the M50. So Alex and I like to plan trips to go to different parts of Japan. She can drive, so one thing we really love is picking somewhere to drive to and then stopping at rest stops on the way. We saw a Ferris wheel from the side of the road, and I was like, no way that's part of this stop. It's, you're just supposed to like get a burger and, well, you know, ramen. <laughs> 
And it could have been a destination. Like it had a barbecue pit restaurant. It had historic houses of Japan and a lake. Like people could go there and have a whole day there. Wow. It feels nice though. Oh, I see a shrimp too. What do you see? It's a shrimp aquarium. <laughs> it even featured a mystical forest complete with a waterfall. Not your average highway gas station and a great place for some portraits. The main attraction of our trip was Gujo Hachiman, a historic town nestled in the mountains, north of Nagoya. Gujo's canals, fountains, and waterways have remained intact since the 17th century. I had never heard of Gujo Hachiman before, and I saw pictures, the mountains, and the greenery, and the river going through it. it seemed like a nice, rustic retreat from Tokyo. There's this beautiful, big, lovely river going right through the middle of the town, but then they've also built all these little canals running down the sides of all the streets, little pathways and little bridges going between them. There's all these stations with little cups that you can just drink the fresh water. Cheers. Having all the water everywhere and having it flowing and hearing the sound of it just as you walk around has been incredibly calming and inspiring. and It just, the town feels so alive. We started our morning at Sabomino, a traditional coffee shop which specializes in the European style of siphon coffee making. The proprietor has been serving her regulars for 43 years. It was like everything you could have hoped for. Gorgeous, like Japan does Europe turn of the century. We probably took way too many pictures, but it was gorgeous. Working in a space as small as this, it was nice to have a compact camera that doesn't get in the way of genuine interaction. Before losing the morning light, we headed into the hills outside of town to get a shot of the iconic Gujo Hachiman Castle. It's um, perched up on a hill surrounded by green mountains, so it's gorgeous to see from the town, but then we did get to go actually go up and see it up close. After touring the castle, we took a moment to try out the M50's high-speed burst mode. For over 1,000 years, craftspeople in Gujo have been practicing the art of indigo dyeing. Founded more than 400 years ago, the Watanabe dye shop is designated as a cultural landmark. After fermenting the indigo plant in large cauldrons, the dyes are applied and set by soaking the fabrics in the river's cold water. One of the most popular products they produce are the iconic fish wind socks. We were lucky enough to get a demonstration by a member of the Watanabe family, Kazuyoshi. He's been working to keep the craft alive. In addition to the traditional arts, Gujo is home to one of the country's more unusual industries, the manufacturing of plastic food. We stopped by Sample Kobo to get a quick lesson. So it turns out the man who came up with the concept of food models in Japan, like displaying in restaurants to show you what they have available, is from this town. And we had the chance to make it ourselves, and they taught us how to make lettuce and tempura, and that was really fun and interesting and unexpected. After working up an appetite at Sample Kobo, it was time for some real food. Featuring traditional local cuisine, Shimbashi Te was a wonderful place to end our time in Gujo. From the streets of Tokyo to the back alleys of this beautiful water town, Catherine and I were able to pack a lot into three days. I have a lot of fun working together as a team and I have a lot of fun exploring and seeing different parts of Japan and, and bringing those parts of Japan to other people. Also, we're both working really hard at learning Japanese, so the more we do that, the, the better we'll be at finding stuff as well. Even after living in Japan for four years, there's still so much to explore. Catherine and I are looking forward to our next adventure. For DP Review, I'm Alex T. Thomas.